Welcome back to my kitchen. Today, I have a treat for you. We're going to make Moroccan sausages, one of our best sellers here at market. So normally it's made with lamb, but today we're gonna to use pork, and we use pork all the time for this recipe at the shop, just because I find that the sweetness of the pork really works well with the ingredients that we have. It brings out that brightness, it makes it fresh and vibrant. So we have toasted cumin, toasted coriander, black pepper, paprika, fresh parsley, honey, beautiful pungent garlic, orange zest, and roasted red pepper to bring out that sweetness. Now I'm gonna show you how to grind it, I'm gonna show you how to stuff it, tie links, so that at home you can either use this recipe or you have now the ratio, the idea on how to make it yourself. So let's get started. First thing we're gonna do is add our spice to our pork. So we'll get this out of the way. Now bring this back over here. We have our spice. You'll notice that we've ground it very finely and we're gonna add it in. We wanna mix it really well. One of the keys to sausage making is incorporating the spice at this point instead of after it's ground. The spice is going to be ground through the pork so it's going to have an even disbursement of, uh, of flavor, right? You can see all of this is well, well coated. It's going to just make a better sausage in the end. That looks good. So let's go to the next step. So we're going to move our sausage stuffer out of the way. I'm going to move the grinder over here. So this is our grinder. It's considerably bigger than, uh, say, this grinder. This is the one that you'd use at home. It's good for small batches. It's good for, uh, that's a small quantity. It'll do the job just fine. For us, it needs to be uh, durable and needs to have that horsepower to grind pretty much anything. So we're gonna add our meat to the hopper. Right in there. We'll put our bowl under here so we catch our meat. And we're gonna add our other ingredients. Parsley. And we add our honey. Get that out of there. This is a fireweed honey, and it actually comes from about 15 minutes north of our shop. We'll add our garlic. There we go. Now on to the orange zest. And we're gonna add just the zest with our microplane here, like this. All right. And you just wanna take off the bright orange. You don't wanna get into the white. The white's the pith, and the pith is bitter. It's going to be fragrant and really add a, a very special dimension to the sausage. So next, we're going to add our roasted red pepper. Now we've roasted, we've seeded, and we've peeled this, so it's just the, the sweet flesh that we have left. Now we're going to start to grind, turn the machine on, and we're going to start pushing the meat through. And when it starts to come out, you want it to be in even strands. If you don't see this even strands, uh, your texture is going to be off. It's not going to be a smooth, fine sausage like you're going to want. The next step to this is going to be adding water or stock or wine or whatever you have. It's important though to add a certain percentage of liquid, normally 10% to whatever volume you're actually ending up with. The reason for this is we're not using any breadcrumb, we're not using any binders. So the, the water or the stock or whatever, the liquid, is going to end up helping bind that protein so that you have a smooth sausage that doesn't crumble after you've sliced it. So now we've finished grinding, we're going to add our liquid. Like I said, we're going to have 10%. We have a two kilo batch, so I'm going to add 200 milliliters of water. So when you start off, it's going to be a little loose, but after you mix it, it's going to come together and you're going to feel it tighten and it's gonna feel like a proper mixture, almost like you would a hamburger patty or a meatball or something like that. And now this looks like it's done. So now we're gonna move this out of the way and make some room for our sausage stuffer. We'll get this. And move this guy over here. And we'll open it up. So you're not gonna need a sausage stuffer quite this big. But if you remember that attachment that I showed you earlier, there's a piece that goes on it that's just like this uh, that'll work for every, everything that you need. So, and I'll just put this into the stuffer. Now when you're packing any sort of stuffer, you wanna make sure that there isn't any air because the air is gonna end up in the casing. You're gonna end up with bubbles in your sausage, which isn't what you want. You want it to be nice and tight and then to evenly dispersed. 
And there we go with the last bit. Looks good. All right, so now it's on to piping our sausages. We have this, oh, like that. And we're gonna put the plunger down and just apply a bit of pressure so that it comes out the end there. At market, we use nothing but natural casings. For this, it's hog casings. You can find synthetic. Preferably for us, we use uh, natural. It, it yields a better product in the end. It has a better snap when you saute it. It's really your preference, but I do recommend using natural casings. So let's get started. Get this going. And that first little bit, you want to make sure that it's, it's well packed in there. You don't want it to, the casing to shoot off the end and so that you end up with a loose sausage. You want it to be nice and tight. So it's going to take a little bit of getting used to to be able to feel the right tension, uh, amount of meat you're putting into the casing. Too much and when you go to tie your links, you're going to split them. Not enough and you're going to end up with loose sausages and that's not what you're looking for. If there's any air pockets, you can poke them out with a pin or a, a toothpick or something like that. The key is just to have a consistent uh, sausage. So we'll just tighten this up. We'll pull off the casing a little bit. We'll cut that. And we'll just tie it on. Again, you want to make sure that the meat is tight. So we'll push it back a bit just to make sure. Get rid of any air bubble. And we'll just tie a simple knot. So we're just going to loosen this spiral up and we're going to start twisting our links. Start at one end and work our way back. So we're going to do our first pinch. You gotta be careful here because that's where it's gonna burst if you've made it too tight. And then do our second pinch. And we'll just gauge that that's the right distance because we want all the sausages to be about the same size. And so once you've pinched, it's just a matter of rolling that over like that. And that's our first link. You wanna do it twice just to make sure it's nice and tight. We'll move on to the next one. And the same principle, pinch and pinch, making sure that we're about the same size. And we'll roll it over once, twice to make sure they're tight and then keep on going. If you've made it so that there's an even disbursement of meat throughout the casing, this is going to be really easy. If it's too much, this is going to be very, very frustrating. So when you get down to the last little bit, you basically just want to make two even sausages and not worry too much about the length. And so my end's just a little loose, so I'm going to pinch and then twirl it around like that to make it nice and tight. And that is that. At Market, we only use the best possible ingredients, from our meats to our produce. If you want to find out more about what we do at the shop and to find today's recipe, just go to our website at marketartisandeli.com. Now for me, I want to know my farmer. I want to know where my food comes from. And I think this is important. Uh, at Market, our whole philosophy is to eat local and eat better.